want to talk about the relationship between empaths and energy vampires. So I'm an empath and I think that I came into the world with this gene that allowed me to sense what was going on for people uh, emotionally for sure, but also sometimes mentally and physically and to get uh, kind of some insight as to why people are how they are. Be able to feel what they're feeling um, in addition to whatever it is I'm feeling. It was confusing at first, but over time I figured out which feelings were theirs, which feelings were mine. Then I ran into the um, energy vampire. And I think now that I'm 42 and I've gone around this merry-go-round a few times, I think that some of the choices the empath makes actually creates a sort of a vicious cycle with the energy vampire. So when I say energy vampire, I mean someone who drains you, someone who hooks you in somehow to their life drama. Um, you find yourself feeling exhausted. Uh, you find yourself thinking about them when they're not there, having imaginary conversations in your head, um, feeling defensive or angry or upset after you've been with them because you've given way too much, whether that be actual services like uh, cooking or cleaning or, you know, spending time with someone, or whether it's more emotional support uh, or being there and listening to them. If the relationship isn't reciprocal, you just get drained and more drained and more drained. There was this book that came out in the 70s called Games People Play, and it identified four ways in which people get energy. They can be the intimidator, the interrogator, the poor me, or aloof. And we all have sort of a default place where we go whenever we're stressed or feeling backed into a corner. Everybody does. And some people spend a lot more time feeling stressed and backed into a corner. This could be because of life events, could be because of mental health and their biochemistry. There's a lot of reasons why. As an empath, we have a tendency to have insight and um, empathy and sympathy for what a person is going through. And I don't know about you, but I think sometimes, ooh, maybe I'm empathic because I could help this person. I could provide some healing. I could provide some teaching. It's, um, it's a bit of an ego hook for me to think, oh, maybe I can fix this person. So, um, we show up week after week, <laughs> sometimes day after day, and we pour out healing energy. Sometimes it's very conscious. We're directing Reiki to certain chakras. We're um, providing coaching and counseling. Uh, sometimes it's more indirect. We're just allowing their aura to feed on our aura. There's this really good book. It's got pictures of this. It's called Light Emerging by Barbara Ann Brennan. I'm only going to show you one, but there's literally dozens of different ways in which auras interact and suck energy back and forth between people. The thing about an empath who has the uh, healer's archetype is that we actually give it away. And I said a few minutes ago, I think that we create a vicious cycle. And here's how. We discover someone who's been broken for any number of reasons, for any length of time. We start to pour that out and they become dependent. And then they start to pull it in. Whatever their brokenness is, it's a, a deficiency in their aura. And so if we're trying to fix that, and it doesn't get fixed, then they become dependent on that feed. And then they start to reach out more and more and more and um, play those games. Poor me, 
uh, intimidate and interrogate. Now the aloof isn't necessarily a way to, for the vampire to hook us back in. In fact, once we're fed up with the vampire, we're the ones who start to play the aloof game because we have to preserve and protect our energies. So what do we do about all this? Well, I have gone around and around <laughs> thinking, oh, okay, well, this is happening in my life. It's a lesson. It's a mirror. There's something about that person that is telling me about me. Yeah, sure. Learn what you can. Uh, but you're an empath, not a vampire. So that mirror metaphor that we use so much in the new age isn't always right on. Okay, so don't get caught up in uh, thinking you are the other person because guess what? That's another trap where you're losing your energy by identifying too much with the vampire. Second thing is um, you, you might get to a place where you feel I've just got to have stronger boundaries. I've got to grow a thicker skin. I've got to find ways to defend my energy from this person. Those are all good life lessons. And yes, please do that. However, there comes a point in time when your own health is going to suffer and you could permanently damage something in your biological system if you don't stop the drain. It's like having a leech. You wouldn't allow a leech to be stuck to you for 10, 20 years. You don't think, oh, I can block the leech from sucking my blood or maybe I'm like the leech or there's a life lesson. No, you gotta pull that sucker off of there. So when you do that, be prepared for a backlash. This person who's been getting free energy from you for a long time and um, has no idea that he or she is a vampire. They don't. They're, the reason we got drawn in is because we had empathy for them. We understand how they got this way. They're poor me's, yeah. It is. Poor them. It's, But I tried. I couldn't fix it. And now I'm going to lose too much of what is core to me. So sometimes you just got to walk away. As my husband would say, you got to maka walk away in your maka waka sins. <laughs> so <clears throat> hopefully this helps you. I believe in you. I think you can do good things in your life. Protect your core energy. Don't give it away. Love you guys.